But then again, what's the point of having fuck you money if you never say fuck you? Welcome to Kyle Anthony's UFC betting show. I am Kyle Anthony and welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the prediction show for UFC fight night, Max Holloway versus Yair Rodriguez. We're going to be talking the main event. We're also going to be talking a method of victory prop that I do like as well as the fate of the card. Excited to talk about this card because we are coming off a fantastic weekend. Last weekend on our client plays, swept the board, went 5-0 and on the client plays, plus 16 units, just crushed it overall. I mean, our main play was a 5% best bet play, was on Bobby Green to defeat Ally Quinta, and boy, that one showed up well. I mean, Al showed up like a guy who had been out of the cage for two years and had been doing real estate because Bobby Green looked sharp as hell, and one of the big things I liked about him was what he did against Fazeev, uh, his last fight. I mean, I thought it was just... A guy of Raphael Fazeev striking, he looked good enough where he was just staying out of danger and actually looked like he was picking up steam later in the fight. I like that compared to a guy like Ally Quinta who just really has not been a part of MMA, probably has not been focused on it, where Bobby Green has just looked sharper and sharper, very underrated overall. He goes up there and gets a quick victory for us there, as well as Imovov. Imovov going out there, minus 115, getting the job done also. I thought he looked great. Edmund Shabazian... I just think the hype is gone. I think there is no hype there at all. I think they brought him up a little, little bit too quickly, and now a lot of things have been exposed. He just is not there when it comes to grappling. Uh, a good striker overall, but I just don't think that he's got much, uh, really what it takes. I, I think he's really got to take a step down there. But Imovov goes up there, dominates. Um, and we had Rose as well. I mean, we hit all five of our plays. Big night for us, so we got to keep it going. And like I always say here, listen, we're coming off a big victory, uh, a big Saturday night, or we're coming off a losing Saturday night. We're always looking to keep going forward because there's the one thing about MMA is there's always opportunity to place money, to make money, because there is no off season, there is no time off. You know, we have one or two weeks off. We're going crazy as an MMA community and as people who want to be betting the sport. So enough with that. We're going to now get into the next for, uh, the next fight, and this is where we're going to be talking about here, the main event. We're going to be talking about here, Max Holloway versus Yair Rodriguez. And what we're going to do here again, we're going to quickly go over three fights for each fighter, see what we see, see if one fighter can expose the other, and if the line makes sense to place a wager. So the first thing we're going to be talking about here, we're going to be talking about Max Holloway. Now you got currently Max Holloway, he's a minus 650 currently, which is pretty crazy. Um, and you've got Yair Rodriguez, who's plus 440, uh, depending where you're shopping it. So I'm going to quickly go over the two fights together um, that Max Holloway had against uh, Alexander Volkanovsky. Two great fights. I mean, they're definitely two great fights here. And in that first fight, you know, and, you, know you did see just, just the way that Volkanovsky was able to kind of get Max out of his rhythm. And I thought the big part there was the leg kicks. He really was able to kind of push out those leg kicks, keep firing them, and you saw early, it really took Max out of his rhythm. And I think that that really set the tone for him showing that he can not only do that, but walk Max down, strike with Max. And I think that threw him off a lot in that first fight, just really how good Volkanovski is. So he goes up there, he gets a decision victory. I thought it was pretty clear uh, in this, in that first one there that he went out there. It was just an easy, uh, okay, I wouldn't say easy, but an easy, um, once it got to the end, it was easy to see that he had won that fight, that Volkanovski got that victory. So quickly kind of go over that one. But the second one I thought was very interesting because this is where Max is so good at making adjustments. He's really good at kind of going out there, figuring his opponent out, making adjustments either on the fly or, or kind of game playing for them. And I thought he did a great job in that second fight where he really kind of put the pace on him, you know, push forward a little bit. And I think that, you know, and he was more prepared for those leg kicks. The leg kicks, I think that he had no answer for uh, that first time. And he was kind of thrown off and he was really taking a lot of damage. And here he kind of was a little more patient with it. He was a little bit able to more to, you know, as Volkanovski was pressing, he kind of pressed back kept the volume going, dropped Volkanovski, you know, a few times, you know, first round dropped him, and then he kind of was even mocking him a little bit. You know, you did hear in that third round, I think it was maybe going to that fourth round, but maybe the end of that third round, you hear the announcer, I think it was Bisbing or whoever it was, you know, said, you know, oh, you know, you know, Max is up 3-0. 
you know, even at that point, it was there were some close rounds in there, but I, you know, you know, Max looked great early, and Volkanovski really, I thought, took it over late. I thought he really pushed through late, really those championship rounds, started getting the victories. I mean, started winning rounds, started landing more, started pushing forward more. So it's a little bit interesting where you know, you know, a lot of people really do think that Max won that fight. I still give it to Volkanovski. I thought it was a three-two Volkanovski. Either way, it was a great showing uh, for Volkanovski to kind of keep the the goat of the uh, of the division a little bit uh, a little bit out of rhythm goes out there, Max loses that fight. Uh, but most recently, the one I want to talk about here is against Calvin Cater. Now, this is a fight here where, again, Max Holloway just, you know, we talk about the boxing of him and the, and the pace and the movement and all those things. And then you've got someone like Calvin Cater, who Calvin Cater has the striking, the boxing, the movement. So it was kind of two guys who fought pretty similar. But the one thing that Max brings that Calvin doesn't is really an, an all-around arsenal. He uses a lot of kicks uh, in, in his combinations where you don't see as much from Cater. He's a boxing-heavy approach, and I think that's what made this fight a lot easier for Max because he was able to just outbox him. He didn't have to worry about as many kicks, takedowns, whatever it may have been. I thought that that put him in a little bit more of a comfortable position, but pretty much it was a mauling. He dismantled Cater, you know, dominated all rounds, Put the you know beat the brakes off of him uh, overall, but there you go. Max Holloway gets that victory in dominant fashion. Uh, and then the other side, you've got Yair Rodriguez. Rodriguez, three fights ago, he fought the Korean Zombie. Now, this was one here where I actually had Yair Rodriguez in this fight, and it was a little bit with you know you had you know Zombie was had been out and you know was you know wasn't as active and. All these things kind of were playing into it, and you just had such a great arsenal of attacks from Yair, where he's just versatile, his kicks, his overall striking. I thought he was going to be able to kind of really put it on him and really have that, that the, the mixture of combinations really would, you know, again, the plotting style of, of the zombie is not, you know, he, you know, he's there to be hit because he's allowing that and he wants to really kind of, you know, take one to give one kind of thing. But really it was that pressure that zombie had really put him out of uh, out of rhythm. I mean, that was something that, you know, early, you know, Yair looked comfortable. He was kind of landing some nice shots, working from the outside. He likes to have space. We've seen that's kind of, that's been his thing, obviously. He wants to be able to utilize space. But zombie kind of, you know, he was always there. He kept pushing forward. He kept pushing forward. And that was really, you know, this, you know, smothering that space really allowed Zombie to have success moving into later into the fight. And that's where you also saw, and a lot of people question this, it's really the heart. It's really the heart, you know, the, the motivation, you know, all those things for Yair. You know, does he have that? Can he dig deep? And I thought in this fight there, he was almost at the point where I, I feel like he was going to fold. I feel like he was going to fold at that, you know, you know, at any moment there. He was, you know, on the losing end of a lot of exchanges. He, you know, he got a lot less flashy as that fight goes on. He gets a lot less flashy. So that is something that I think that, you know, can be exposed with, with maybe some higher level fighters. Um, but in this situation here, you do know that obviously he landed that crazy elbow, drops Korean Zombie, fight over with the second left. And Yair gets that victory. He squeaks it out there, but again, it, it did show cracks in the armor. It did show that Yair actually, you know what, there, there are opportunities where you can really put Yair into uncomfortable positions and have success striking. Uh, then two fights ago, it was Jeremy Stevens. It was the eye poker around the world or whatever it may be, the eye gouge or whatever the hell you want to call it. He goes out there. They, uh, it ends in 15 seconds. It was a really hyped fight. So then they do it a second time, of course. And when they fought here, this was one where it was just a ton of blood, a bad blood. You know, you know, Jeremy Stevens talking about really putting him out, really going to lay it on him. He was really looking to kind of push that pace. And that's something that, again, really was a path to victory because you did see that Grand Zombie a lot, you know, was able to kind of get in tight and work those shots. And the one thing about Jeremy Stevens is that, yes, he, you know, he's a bully. He likes to push forward. But he is okay actually standing at range in certain spots. And you saw even in this fight early, he had no answers. I mean, pretty much, you know, Yair landing the big shots, flashy kicks, jumping, you know, jumping this, spinning that. He was throwing a lot of crazy combinations. And those combinations, I think, really, you know, threw Jeremy or kind of pushed him back a little bit. And then that second round landed a beautiful body kick Yair did. You know, Stevens goes down. He beats the hell out of Stevens on the ground. But in that third round is really what Jeremy Stevens should have been doing the whole fight. Is where he pushed forward, didn't give a shit, said, you know what? I'm pushing forward. I'm going to throw the big shots. I don't really care. Um, I'm going to see what happens. And 
then he ends up having success. You know, pushes, you know, Yair back. Yair had his back to the cage. He's firing big shots, you know, got him to the ground, went for takedowns. And I think the emotion part of that really kind of, you know, didn't allow Stevens to just stick to a plan, push forward, you know, you know, look for the takedowns. And I think he was more worried that, hey, there's bad blood here. I'm looking for the knockout. You know, the path to victory was clearly the wrestling, clearly the grappling. And he didn't do it really until the third round. So, you know, he loses on the, uh, Jeremy loses on the, on the scorecards there. But you do see, again, there's paths to victory. There's paths to, to beating um, Yair Rodriguez. But it looks to be more obviously on uh, the grappling side or some of the pressure side. But either way, Yair Rodriguez goes out there and gets a decision victory. Now, with that being said, um, now, obviously, the, you know, you've got Max Holloway. I mean, obviously, again, we, we don't have to talk about too much of his high-level striking. I mean, we know what he's got there. He's, a, you know, elite-level striking, well-rounded, you know, is able to really utilize a lot of different body parts when he's throwing out combinations. Um, a big part also is his cardio. You know, he can put out a strong pace. He can push forward with it. It's nonstop volume. He really is able to work that. And that's how he kind of melts opponents. And that's kind of the one thing that he's had is if he's going to finish a guy, it is death by accumulation. He's not going to, you know, for the most part, he's not throwing this big, hard, heavy, you know, overhand right that's going to drop a guy. He's more going to be, you know, on the side of I'm going to just keep the pace push forward, get them in bad positions, land big shots, and when they can't take it anymore, they're going to drop. And that's kind of been, you know, the way that Max has kind of worked, you know, through, you know, you know, you know accumulating the damage. Where on the other side, uh, you've got Yair Rodriguez, and obviously, you know, again, high-level kickboxing, kind of the same, same thing, versatile striking, has a lot of weapons when it comes down to it. But I think the big part here, you know, obviously we're, we're, we're just looking at it as who can win the fight. Obviously, Max Holloway has all the tools, and the line is, is obviously stating that, that he's got all the tools to go out there and get this victory, and I completely agree. I just don't agree with the line. Now, we did fall, now we talked about this on a show, we did fall victim to, you know, again, it's a dogger pass, and this feels like when you're just talking about a straight wager, it's a dogger pass where, you know what, there's no way I'm, I'm laying, you know, you know, seven to one, six to one on, uh, on Max. And I'm not as comfortable with Yair having the ability to get this victory, even at plus 440. Now, I can't blame anyone who bets Yair Rodriguez at plus 440. I cannot blame you. That is just a crazy wide line. And uh, I just think that's kind of a crazy wide line. So I don't, to me here, when we're betting this, I don't really want to do a straight wage run here. I think it's going to be a method of victory play here. For me, so as one of my free plays, I really think that there's a spot here where both guys are going to have space. Both guys are going to be working from the outside. Both guys are, you know, have the kickboxing. You know, you know, both guys really going to be, you know, so you know, going to have that opportunity there. So for me, I think that's where it kind of gets a little bit further. Now the big question here is the cardio of Yair. Does he have the cardio? Can he keep pushing forward? Can he keep landing? Can he keep that volume going? Max is going to push you. Max is going to force you in bad positions. Can Yair, um, you know, withstand those shots? And that's kind of where I'm at at this point with this fight here. So when you're looking at a method of victory play, we've got um, the, uh, where is it? The knockout is plus 145. We've got winning by points, plus 120. Either one of those to me is just extraordinary value when you're looking at a straight wager and you're seeing minus 650. I think that's just crazy price there where there's just a ton of value on one of those. I don't see a submission victory happening here, so I think we can push that to the side. I think this is a spot here where you've got to look at one of those. Now, can Max finish him? Is Max the kind of guy that can go out there and land the big shots? If anything, if there's really anything there, I think it's going to be cardio, you know, a cardio issue late for, for uh, Yair, where Yair just can't keep the, you know, can't keep up with the pace, and then he can get dropped, can he, you know, can get melted, can get finished. But to me on this, you know, you've got the knockout on that. But I think this is a spot where it's just going to be a lot of striking, a lot of volume, a lot of space between both of these guys. I don't think Max is going to take him down. I think it's going to be a striking spot. So I think this goes to a decision. I think Max can clearly go out there, win, you know, four of the five rounds, dominate from the outside, and just beat the hell out of Yair over five rounds, but not being able to get the finish. I think Yair can squeak this out and make it through to get to the finish there. So I do like Max Holloway via decision, plus 120. I think the line is nice there. I think it's worth it if you're looking to place a wager on there. But again, dogger pass here, 
I, I just, I'm not comfortable with Yair, uh, you know, even at this price to go out there and get the victory. So there you have it there. Now we're going to talk another play. Uh, we're going to talk Courtney Casey versus Liana Jojua. And now listen, I know everybody wants to bet Liana. She's good looking. I got it. You want to bet her. You want to cheer for her on Saturday night. That all stuff. It's great, great, great news. Uh, but I don't agree with it at all. Um, obviously, you've got, you know, right now you've got Courtney Casey. She's at a minus 245. You've got the comeback here on Liana. You've got... Um, uh, plus 195 uh, right now. So the line is pretty wide here. Now, to, for starters, I am not looking to lay, you know, you know, uh, you know, minus 240 on Courtney Casey. So let's talk about what we're going to be doing here. So right away, you got to look at competition level here. That's the first thing that really stuck out to me when I was capping this fight. And when you look at it here, you've got, you know, Courtney Casey. She is, you know, 9-9. Nine nine, and, you know, obviously it's not the most sexy ske uh, schedule there, record there. But, you know, she's fought... You know, Wooderson, she's fought uh, Calvillo, she's fought Jillian Robertson, uh, she's fought um, uh, Andrea Hill, you know, she and she beat Andrea Hill. Um, you know, she's had some really tough, tight fights with some of these girls where she's had split decision losses. Now, yeah, she's a little bit lanky and, and, and not, maybe not all well put together when her, with her striking, but she's had some really some really tight fights with some pretty good girls in that division. Where on the other side here, you've got Jojua and... Her basically, the only thing that, you know, she fought was, was Miranda Maverick, who I do believe is really going to continue to elevate the vision. But her only thing that she's done is she got her ass kicked, you know, and then the, and then the, the fight was stopped. So I, I don't really, I don't think she's done much here. And, and I think the line actually it's, is a little warranted here at this point because I don't really see many paths for Jojua to kind of go out there where she's kind of looked unmotivated in certain fights. So, you know, you, you have that on it also. But again, the striking with both of these, I think that they're both you know, very, very basic. There's very basic striking with both of these. But you have Cordy Casey also with a five-inch reach advantage where she's going to pop the jab out. You know, Joju is not going to have many answers. She doesn't really do too much creative when, it, when you're talking about striking. She's flat-footed. Um, and I think that that's going to allow Casey to kind of land the big shots, get into the clinch, put her up against the fence, work some shots, work positioning. I think it's pretty clear that she has all the tools to kind of go out there and get this victory. But I think the reason why this line really is sitting at this point is because of Jojua's last fight with Maverick, where Maverick beat the hell out of her and almost looked like, you know, Jojua was kind of done. She was like, I'm, you know, I'm over this. You know, I'm getting my butt kicked. My nose is busted open. I think she's the kind of girl that obviously she's more on the caring about her looks side of things than, than maybe being a world champion. And that's where we're looking at a spot here where I think that's why the line got to this point. But when again, this is another spot where I think a method of victory play makes absolute sense here. So when you're looking at it here, Courtney Casey is not this big time finisher by any means. She has, you know, has some on her record, but she's not one to do that. Now, I think the reason why um, Casey via decision is minus 110 is because what the last fight was. I think it's an overcorrection, I think, in this spot here where, you know, everyone's, you know, she did not look motivated in the last fight. You know, people are thinking she's going to go out there. She's going to get her ass kicked. I think she's going to lose, but I, I don't think Casey has that, that instinct, that killer instinct to go in there, get the finish, even if it's presented. I think she could play it safe in certain spots. She wants to get this victory. She's also another girl that, you know, has had a lot of losses on her record too. So I think Casey via decision minus... 110. The value is there. I think the line is off. I think this is at a pick em price. This is just a no-brainer for me here. I think it's worth a sprinkle. I think it's worth a shot um, as a play here. So that is my second free play, Courtney Casey via decision. And then the fate of the card, very quickly, the fate of the card. Now, we've had some of these here where guys have looked very iffy in that first, you know, you know, the, the big favorite has looked very iffy in that first round, and then they do pull it out. You know, they pulled out some close wins here on some of the ones that we've talked about. And that's the whole reason of this. You know, that's the whole reason of this. I'm not always saying, hey, take the other guy. Or I'm just saying, tread lightly. This fight is a lot closer than the line indicates. And the one we're going to be talking about here is going to be Kyle Dawkins versus Roman Delitze. Now, you've got uh, Dawkins. He's minus 220, 225. You've got Delitze plus 185, somewhere around there. Now, the thing here, you know, to, to keep this as short as possible... Uh, the thing here is, I'm not that big on Dawkins. I I'm not that big on Dawkins overall. Now, you know, he just, you know, he's lost to, um, 
who's had some, you know, iffy losses, you know, somewhere, you know, in there were against Haas. Um, but I, I think <laughs> I think his claim to fame is really where he um, he beat uh, on short notice. He beat Brandon Allen. I think that has been kind of you know his feather in his cap, where he, he you know jumped in early. It was very very short. Um, notice he came in, he fought him tough, he rolled around with Brandon Allen, who, who again, I, I actually believe Brandon Allen can continue in the division as well and kind of get some victories. He's looked good. He comes in, you know, he comes into a, a tough Brandon Allen fight, puts on a tough performance, does lose, but looks good. I, I don't, I just don't really see that much. Where you've got the Litze, who, you know, I think the grappling could be there. Now, the question mark obviously is going to be the cardio. We know the cardio could be an issue for him, but he's a big, strong guy. And I think he can do what he did against Steropoli. I thought where he pretty much, you know, swept through, was able to kind of just pick him up, throw him down, keep positioning, you know, you know, hold those positions. It doesn't have to be sexy for you to get paid. I think this is a spot here where I think the Litze has an opportunity to go out there. I think he's going to be able to kind of work position. He's going to be the stronger guy. I think, he, I think even in the clinch, he's going to have that strength advantage. I just think that Dawkins at this price is off. I think this is a place where the where the line probably should be much closer. I think it should be minus 115, somewhere around there. I think it's way closer than this line indicates. So I think for me here in this spot, I think Dawkins is a fade. I don't think it's worth playing. Um, now I am now this is one of the spots where I am actually looking at possibly playing. Uh, Delitze in this spot. If I do, I will post it, or if I make it a client play, I will make it a client play. But I'm kind of looking at this one, and the more I've looked at it uh, before I started filming, really started out like Delitze here, you know, more and more. But as of this very moment, I'm saying just stay away from Dawkins. I think this fight will be close. I think the strength advantage could be where this fight could be won for, for Delitze. So that's uh, buyer beware. There you go. So those are my free plays, my fate of the card for UFC Fight Night this Saturday night. If you're interested in my package, I do have a 4% play linked in the description up right now. I'm going to have more plays added to the package leading up to Fight Night. So if you're interested, take a look. Definitely like, comment, subscribe, all those things. I appreciate it. Follow me at Kyle Anthony UFC. And this is Kyle Anthony's UFC betting show, and I'll see you next time.